After a long day of driving, I decided to take a break at a rest area. The road had been lonely, and I hadn't seen another vehicle for hours. The sun had set, and the darkness seemed to swallow everything around me. The rest area looked deserted, just a few old picnic tables and a rundown restroom building. I parked my truck and stepped out, stretching my legs. The air was cool, and the wind rustled the leaves in the nearby trees. It was so quiet, all I could hear was the sound of my own breathing. I walked around a bit to stretch my legs, feeling the tension from the long drive slowly easing away. As I wandered closer to the tree line, I noticed something that caught my eye, a flicker of movement in the shadows. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to take a closer look. The further I walked, the more uneasy I felt, but I couldn't pinpoint why. As I stepped into the trees I saw them, old, rusted vehicles scattered about, their doors swinging open. It was like a graveyard for abandoned cars. I walked among them, feeling a strange mix of curiosity and dread. The vehicles were covered in rust and dirt, some with flat tires and broken windows. I wondered how long they had been there, and why they had been left behind. Just as I was about to turn back, I heard whispers. They were faint, almost like the wind was carrying voices from far away. I stopped and listened, my heart pounding in my chest. The whispers grew louder, and I could swear they were coming from all around me. A cold shiver ran down my spine. I turned in circles, trying to see who or what was making the noise, but there was nothing but shadows and rusted metal. Suddenly, I felt an overwhelming sense of being watched. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I knew I had to get out of there. I started walking back toward my truck, trying to stay calm. The whispers followed me, growing more insistent and frantic. I quickened my pace, my footsteps crunching on the gravel path. When I finally reached my truck, I jumped in and locked the doors. My hands were shaking as I fumbled with the keys, finally getting the engine to start. I looked around one last time, but there was nothing to see, just the dark outlines of the trees and the abandoned vehicles. I drove away from the rest area, my heart still racing. As I got back on the highway, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. What had I just experienced? Were the whispers real, or was my mind playing tricks on me? I turned up the radio, trying to drown out the thoughts racing through my head, but the eerie feeling lingered. A few miles down the road, I saw headlights in my rearview mirror. For a moment, I thought it might be another trucker, but the lights disappeared as quickly as they had appeared. I tried to convince myself it was nothing, just my imagination running wild after the strange encounter at the rest area. I kept driving until I reached a more populated area, finally pulling into a well-lit truck stop. I parked and sat in my truck for a moment, taking deep breaths to calm myself. The bright lights and the sound of other people moving around were a welcome relief after the darkness and silence of the rest area. I decided to grab a coffee and something to eat, hoping to shake off the lingering fear. As I sat in the truck stop diner, I couldn't stop thinking about the whispers and the abandoned vehicles. I wondered if other truckers had experienced something similar at that rest area. Maybe it was just an eerie coincidence, or maybe there was something more to it. That night, I barely slept, the strange experience replaying in my mind. From that day on, I was more cautious about where I stopped to rest. The memory of that deserted rest area and the whispers in the dark stayed with me, a chilling reminder of the unknown dangers that can lurk in the most unexpected places. I was driving late at night on a lonely stretch of highway, the kind where you don't see another car for miles. The sky was pitch black, and the only light came from my truck's headlights cutting through the darkness. I had been on the road for hours and was looking forward to finding a rest stop to catch some sleep. As I rounded a bend, I saw something up ahead in the distance. It looked like a person standing by the side of the road, waving their arms. My first thought was to keep driving. You hear stories about the dangers of picking up hitchhikers, especially at night. 
But then I thought, what if they really need help? Maybe their car broke down, and they're stranded. My conscience got the better of me, and I decided to stop. I slowed the truck and pulled over to the side of the road, rolling down the passenger window slightly. The person approached, and I could see it was a man, probably in his late thirties or early forties. He was wearing a tattered jacket, and his face looked tired and desperate. Can you give me a ride? he asked, his voice shaky. I hesitated for a moment but then nodded. Sure, hop in. He climbed into the passenger seat, and I started driving again. The atmosphere in the cab was tense and quiet. I tried to make small talk to ease the tension. So, where are you headed? I asked. Just up ahead, he replied, not giving much detail. He was fidgety, constantly looking around as if he was expecting something to happen. After a few minutes, he suddenly pulled a knife from his jacket and pointed it at me. My heart skipped a beat, and my hands tightened on the steering wheel. Drive faster, he demanded, his voice now firm and menacing. Panic set in, but I knew I had to stay calm. My mind raced as I tried to think of a way out of this situation. I glanced at the man and noticed his grip on the knife wasn't very steady. Maybe I could catch him off guard. I took a deep breath and decided to take a risk. I spotted a dirt road leading off the highway up ahead and swerved the truck toward it. The sudden move caught the man off balance, and he lurched to the side, the knife slipping slightly from his grip. Seizing the opportunity, I slammed on the brakes, causing the truck to skid and jolt to a stop in the ditch beside the road. The man was thrown forward, and the knife fell from his hand. I didn't waste a second. I unlocked the door and shoved it open, pushing the man out with all my strength. He stumbled out of the truck and fell to the ground. I quickly shut the door, locked it, and floored the gas pedal, the tires spinning in the dirt before catching traction. I sped away, my heart pounding in my chest. As I drove back onto the highway, I kept glancing in my mirrors, half expecting to see the man chasing after me but there was nothing. The road was as empty as before, and I was alone again. I drove for a while longer, my hands shaking on the steering wheel. I finally pulled into a rest area and parked, my mind reeling from what had just happened. I leaned back in my seat, trying to calm my racing heart. I knew I had to report the incident, so I pulled out my phone and called the police. They took my statement— and assured me they would send someone to check the area. That night I barely slept. The image of the man with the knife haunted me, and the thought of what could have happened kept running through my mind. It was a stark reminder of the dangers that can come with life on the road. From that day on, I promised myself I would never stop for a hitchhiker again, no matter how desperate they seemed. I was cruising down the highway late one night, the kind of night when the darkness seems to swallow everything around you. The only sounds were the hum of my truck's engine and the occasional rustle of the wind. It was a long haul, and I was focused on the road ahead, trying to stay awake and alert. As I drove through the pitch-black night, my headlights caught something on an overpass up ahead. I squinted to see more clearly and realized it was a figure standing there, right on the edge. My first thought was that it might be someone in trouble, maybe thinking about jumping. My heart started to race. I slowed down a bit, not sure what to do. As I got closer, the figure seemed to disappear. One second it was there, and the next it was gone. I felt a chill run down my spine. Maybe it was just my tired eyes playing tricks on me, I thought. But the uneasiness wouldn't leave me. I kept driving, trying to shake off the strange encounter. But a few miles down the road, my radio started acting up. The static was so loud it made me jump. I reached over to adjust the dial, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get it to clear up. Then, through the crackling noise, I heard a faint voice. Help me, it said. I froze. The voice was weak and distant, almost like a whisper. I turned the volume up, trying to catch more, 
but the static drowned out everything else. My heart was pounding now. I knew I had to pull over and figure out what was going on. I found a spot on the side of the road and pulled the truck over. The darkness felt even more oppressive now that I was stopped. I sat there for a moment, trying to calm myself, but the voice on the radio kept echoing in my head. Help me! I got out of the truck, the cool night air hitting me like a slap in the face. I looked around, but there was nothing but empty highway and darkness. I took a deep breath and walked a few steps away from the truck, straining to hear any sounds other than the wind. Nothing. Just silence. I decided to get back in the truck and try to make sense of it all. Maybe the voice was just some weird interference. I reached for the radio again, turning the dial slowly, but all I got was static. I was about to give up when I heard it again, clearer this time. Help me! The voice sent a shiver down my spine. It sounded so desperate, so real. I had no idea what to do. Should I call someone? But who would believe me? They'd think I was crazy or just tired. Suddenly, I saw movement in my side mirror. I turned quickly, my heart nearly leaping out of my chest. There, in the dim glow of my truck's rear lights, I saw a shadowy figure standing by the roadside. It looked like the same figure from the overpass. I felt a wave of fear wash over me. I wanted to drive away as fast as I could, but something kept me rooted to the spot. I couldn't just leave if someone really needed help. I got out of the truck again, this time with my flashlight. I pointed it toward the figure, but as soon as the light hit where it should have been, there was nothing. The road was empty. No one was there. I was so scared I could hardly move. I scrambled back into the truck, locking the doors behind me. My hands were shaking as I started the engine. I sped off, my eyes glued to the road ahead, afraid to look in the mirrors again. For the rest of the drive, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every shadow seemed to move, every sound made my heart race. When I finally reached a truck stop, I parked and sat there for a long time, trying to calm down. I never found out what that voice was or who the figure on the overpass might have been. To this day, I still wonder if it was someone trying to reach out for help or just my mind playing tricks on me. Whatever it was, that night left a mark on me that I'll never forget. I was driving my truck through the night, heading down a long, dark highway. The road stretched out endlessly before me, illuminated only by the glow of my headlights. I was used to driving alone in the dark, but something about this night felt different, unsettling. It was just past midnight when I saw something ahead. A figure was standing on the side of the road, wearing a white dress that seemed to glow in the headlights. She was waving her arms, trying to get my attention. My first thought was that she might be in trouble. Maybe her car had broken down, and she needed help. I slowed down, and as I got closer, I could see her face. She looked young, maybe in her twenties, with long, dark hair. Her eyes were wide and filled with fear. I pulled over to the side of the road and rolled down my window. Are you okay? I called out. She didn't answer, just kept staring at me with those frightened eyes. I felt a chill run down my spine. Something about this didn't feel right, but I couldn't just leave her there. I opened the door and stepped out of the truck. As soon as I was out, she disappeared. One second she was there, and the next, she was gone. I looked around, confused and a little scared. There was no sign of her anywhere. I got back into the truck, my hands shaking, and drove away as quickly as I could. My mind was racing, trying to make sense of what I had just seen. A few miles down the road, I saw her again. She was standing by the side of the highway, in the same white dress, looking just as scared as before. My heart was pounding now. How could she have gotten ahead of me? I didn't stop this time. I just kept driving, my eyes glued to the road. I thought maybe I was just tired, seeing things that weren't there. 
but as I continued, the radio in my truck started acting up. It was just static at first, but then I heard a voice, faint and distant. Help me, it said. I turned the volume up, trying to hear more, but the static drowned it out. The voice sounded so desperate, and I couldn't shake the feeling that it was connected to the girl in the white dress. My heart was racing, and I didn't know what to do. I decided to keep driving, hoping to reach a rest stop soon. As I drove, the voice on the radio kept repeating, Help me! Over and over. It was driving me crazy. I finally saw a sign for a rest area up ahead and pulled in, parking the truck and turning off the engine. The silence was overwhelming. I sat there for a moment, trying to calm down. Then I heard it again, this time outside the truck. Help me, the voice whispered. I looked out the window, and there she was, standing just a few feet away, staring at me with those same frightened eyes. I locked the doors and turned on the interior light, but she was gone. The rest area was empty, no sign of her anywhere. I was so scared I could hardly move. I started the truck and drove off not stopping until I reached the next town. I spent the rest of the night in a motel, too shaken to continue driving. I never saw the girl in the white dress again, but the memory of that night has stayed with me. Sometimes I wonder if she was real or just a ghost, a lost soul trying to find her way. Whatever she was, she left a mark on me that I'll never forget. While hauling a load through a remote area one night, I was driving my truck on a familiar route when my GPS suddenly malfunctioned. The screen went blank, and then it rerouted me down a narrow dirt road. I knew it didn't seem right, but I decided to follow it anyway, thinking it might be a shortcut. Big mistake. The dirt road was bumpy and barely wide enough for my truck. Trees loomed on either side, their branches creating eerie shadows that danced in my headlights. I drove slowly, trying to find a place to turn around, but the road kept twisting and turning. My nerves were on edge, and I started to feel like I was being watched. After what felt like forever, I saw an old farmhouse in the distance. It was run down, with broken windows and a sagging roof. I thought maybe I could ask for directions, so I decided to get a closer look. As I approached, I saw a dim light flickering in one of the windows. It was strange because the house looked abandoned. I parked the truck and got out, flashlight in hand. The night was eerily quiet. The only sound was the crunch of gravel under my boots. As I walked towards the farmhouse, I felt a chill run down my spine. The place gave off an unsettling vibe. When I reached the front porch, I noticed the door was slightly ajar. I hesitated but called out. Hello? Is anyone there? My voice echoed in the silence. No answer. I pushed the door open a bit more and peered inside. The interior was dark and musty, filled with old, dusty furniture and cobwebs hanging from the ceiling. I decided to step inside, just a few steps to see if anyone was there. That's when I heard it, a soft, almost inaudible whisper. I couldn't make out the words, but it sent a shiver through me. I turned around, ready to leave, but as I did, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. In the doorway to another room, I saw a group of shadowy figures. They were standing there, watching me. My heart pounded in my chest, and I felt a surge of panic. I backed out of the house quickly, my flashlight beam shaking as I moved. The figures didn't follow, but their presence was enough to make me feel like I was in serious danger. I rushed back to my truck, jumped in, and locked the doors. My hands were trembling as I started the engine. I glanced back at the farmhouse, and through the rearview mirror, I saw the figures standing on the porch now, still watching me. I floored the gas pedal and sped away, the tires kicking up dirt and gravel. As I drove back down the narrow road, I kept looking in the mirrors, expecting to see those figures following me, but they didn't. I finally reached the main highway and felt a wave of relief wash over me. 
I pulled over to catch my breath and collect my thoughts. I knew I had to get back on track and find the right route, but the memory of those shadowy figures and the eerie farmhouse stayed with me. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had encountered something otherworldly, something that didn't want me there. When I finally reached a truck stop, I parked and called my dispatcher, explaining what had happened. They were puzzled by the GPS malfunction and told me to take a different route. I spent the night in my truck, unable to sleep, replaying the night's events over and over in my mind. The next morning, with the sunlight easing my fears a bit, I continued my journey. But the experience left a mark on me. I've driven many miles since then, but I always steer clear of remote dirt roads and abandoned farmhouses. Some places are better left unexplored, 